everybody, this is Anthony. This is Isaac. We are here with a cold weather specialist today, and we're going to talk about um, cold weather training, how the body responds to cold. I know you guys have seen some of the videos we've put up regarding cold. Um, we're going to talk about how your body can actually acclimate to the cold, depending on how long you're exposed to it, and how you would go about getting exposed to it, getting acclimated, and the different physiological effects of the cold. That's yeah. enough. Basically, okay. first question, when you hear cold weather, what do you think? When you feel cold weather, do you think of your training in the past? Is it? I do. Um, cold weather, I think, it, the, the first thing that comes to my mind in cold weather is loosen layers and clothing. That's the first thing because my world has been at high altitude and cold weather. So I always think loosen layers. And I think about um, body temperature. Regulating, knowing your body temperature, what you do in the beginning of a cold weather exercise, and then periodically throughout the cold weather exercise, how your body is going to react to the cold weather, how fast it's going to recover, and so forth and so on. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, so when you think about high altitude, high well, high cold, low low temperatures, how do you? What is your first step in that in that process? Getting people ready to get there, or is it just like, hey, we're going to drop you off, boop, or is it like we're going to work our way into that kind of cold? Um, and for my, for my part of the world, we would give them classes first okay. on cold weather injuries on the body, what happens at certain degrees, um, i.e. freezing, skin freezes at 28 degrees Fahrenheit, um, well, frostbite, mm-hmm. frost nip, things like that. Those are all signs that you need to recognize that your body's going through and how your body heats up at night and then cools down, of course, at, 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 uh, or heats up in the day, cools down at night time sleeping, keeping yourself warm with uh, water bottles below freezing, you know, 20 below zero, stuff like that. Uh, but we give them all the tools they need to go out and actually conduct themselves and then... So first education mm-hmm. is what you focus Education is always first. Okay. It's usually about a week of classes okay. uh, and then we'll put them in the field, in the environment. And these classes, like, I'm assuming pretty extensive? Or they are. They're roughly about an hour long for each subject, so we okay. might cover co- uh, clothing for one hour. And then okay. the next hour we'll cover uh, nutrition is always the biggest part of that because you have to feed your body. Yeah, uh, Because your body's constantly eating itself at altitude. So you, your normal diet that you would have at sea level or normal temperatures even at 50 degrees here is not the same as a zero degree weather at altitude. So you have to learn where your body's going to process because everyone eats different things, but eventually when it gets to a certain degree in weather and altitude, everybody's eating almost the same thing. Mm-hmm. Because if you don't, you take this wide parameter of food from here at altitude and normal temperatures, when you become colder and higher altitude, there's only so many foods that will give you that return in, in calories. Okay. So if, you, if your body can't process the food that you're bringing in, is one of the things that we uh, tested for like the Eco Challenge we did. We, uh, each person processes bars differently. Some bars work for you, some bars work for you, uh, and a majority of them don't work for me. Only one or two of them do. So what food can you process? Just because you eat it, it doesn't mean that energy is going to be returned because your body's going to get rid of things that it doesn't need. Yes. So what actually works for me? Is it pasta alfredo? Specific foods. Right. Gotcha. Normally it is pasta alfredo. <laughs> alfredo works well at high altitude. Chicken ala king, yeah. Okay. Granola? Granola is a perfect to start off. Because um, I know that, I, I know um, former like friends and stuff, former friends, friends in the military and stuff that um, they talk about they get a lot of granola. Yeah, you make your take own it granola. With them. Yeah, okay, make your own granola. Make your own granola. Um, you can take it with you. So, okay, so if you're doing altitude and cold weather, you want to start your morning out. Um, if it's like an alpine ascent to summit a mountain right around 11.30 at night, you start out with a big bowl of oatmeal or a big bowl of chicken a la king or okay. rice, chicken and rice, things like that, right? Okay. Something that's going to fill your, your body, your stomach, and then it's going to start to slowly eat. Then foods that we would take would be high in fat, protein, sausage, cheese, uh, and then we'd make our own granola. We'd mix the granola, uh, and then every hour as you're moving, like most of the movements that we would do would be 10 hour movements. It's like um, climbing Mount Rainier, right? You go to, to a certain base camp, you get up at 11 at night, at night and you want to be on the summit right around 7 in the morning to okay. 6.30. So that's 8 hours of constant movement at altitude. 
and you're carrying weight. So your body's eating all this calories inside. You know, you come down a lot skinnier. So you have to periodically feed your body. So we would get on a time schedule to where we would mark it every 30 minutes. Every 30 minutes, a guy would give us a warning, one minute to 30. Guys would start breaking out as wow. we were moving. Wow. We wouldn't wow. stop. Wow. We would just break it out. And then we would eat for 30 seconds or so. And then drink some water, usually diluted Gatorade, 25% or so. And then okay. we would continue moving. That's how you make time and distance and still feed your body. Wow. Without stopping. Without stopping, because when you stop, you're wasting time. Yeah. Wow. And it's precious because you have to get to a certain point by 7 a.m. Yeah, right? because you you're don't. on the schedule. Right, because the mountain changes after that when the sun comes up. I the saw the change. movie Everest, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, how, how accurate was that? It's, it's pretty accurate. Okay. Uh, the food, the stuff, uh, the temperature, as you saw, they started, you know, somewhere right around 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. To do a summit. Because I noticed you keep touching back on, like, 11 p.m. is when you start or something. Yeah, I do. Like, anytime it's um, 17,000 or below a summit, I'll start somewhere right around 11 o'clock. Okay. Because I want to be at that summit. Because it's still frozen. It's still stable. The snow is still stable. Uh, when the sun comes up and it why. starts to melt, yeah, then it becomes cool. unsafe. Oh, okay. Okay. That makes sense. And then it's, that's, you that's fall in it deeper, right? So you work harder. In oh, yeah, you work harder. And you'll go to your supplies. Yeah. It's, yeah, okay. Wow. So Maybe that was too much. I don't know. No, no, no. no, 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 no we love no, this no, right now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, I do, If you, after your question, I want to touch, you mentioned you touched on an hour on clothing. Mm -hmm. Just kind of briefly, just like what clothes and stuff. No. Um, jackets, you said loose clothing? Loose and layers. Loose and layers. When you're in cold weather, you never wear... Unless you're just going to stand there, right? And you've got some big puffy jacket that's already built everything in. Okay. But you never um, go with one jacket. You know, if you're moving, you're always going to be moving. You always loose in layers, layer in, in many layers, from silk weight poly pro okay. to your next uh, fleece or to your next shell, and then your outer jacket. Okay. So you're creating this heat barrier inside these jackets, right? Mm -hmm. And then that's actually when you start to sweat, we teach guys to put on all their stuff instead of changing their clothes, if that's all you have, because you're creating this oven yeah. with your jackets and it's drying the layers that you have that are already wet. So that's how we teach them to survive on what they have. Oh, wow. Like we'll put them in cold weather, take them to Alaska. Multiple birds, one stone. And we'll make them get in the water in Alaska, right? Okay. During the winter. Freezing cold, everything's wet. Pull it out, put your big puppy jacket on, on everything that's wet, and then start moving around where you are. The system that we designed dries you all the way through. Within 35 to an hour, that system is completely wow, dry. that's quick. Yeah. That's super Because you can't that's carry it. You're in Alaska. Yeah. Yeah. You just jumped in the water. And that's yeah. utilizing your own heat. So when you say system, it right. is just body heat body and heat. movement. Body heat okay. and movement. And then so loose and layered content that builds this oven-like effect. Oh yeah. Probably the evaporation effect. Wow. Um, so I know bef bef when we first talked about doing this, we talked about the weight fluctuations that you had. Mm -hmm. What would you, it, it, without the without the altitude climbing, whatever, everything else? Because people are going to hear that and go, "Well, I'm not climbing. I'm not in altitude." When you think about the the metabolic boost that you get just from being cold, I mean, you guys have numbers on that, like it's X percent higher or whatever. Or how did you kind of yeah. come up with how much fuel you need per? Well, I can't give you the specifics on, on the uh, percentages okay. because it was su it's such a wide spectrum. A, okay. a, a team that we came from, we had guys like your size, right? You would be like the small guy, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and then definitely. I'm, I'm <laughs> but there was a time where on a, one of my teams, I was the small guy okay. on the team. I mean, I was the small guy. So, um, yeah, back to your question. We don't have any percentages um, that I can quote off the top of my head. Okay. Yeah. We hired a bunch of scientists <laughs> to come in. Really smart guys. <laughs> right. We hired a bunch of scientists because that's not what we're good at. Yeah. Um, we brought them in. We, bought, we brought in a bunch of NFL doctors and NFL yeah. trainers to design a program for us. And uh, uh, to compare what an NFL athlete looks like to where I came from. And it ended up being that we were more physically fit than any NFL football player could ever be. Okay. And the task that we had to do required us to have an overall body function. So we got away from our traditional, you know, cold weather uh, training, our traditional physical fitness, mm -hmm. to more of um, the Thor program, okay. which is like CrossFit. Okay. But 
we incorporate all of our cold weather baths, you know, our tubs, yeah. our, um, all of our, our uh, massage therapists at the end. Because it, like you, as you know, with cold weather, immediately when you're done working out, you want to get into that bath, that ice bath. And so your muscles start you know, contracting and they start regenerating. And then the next day, because you have to conduct yourself the next day, you're ready to go for the next day. Yes. So we tried this without doing that, of course. And again, we had to recover. So it's like two days of recovery. And then you're so sore the next day. So adding in the rolling out and the yeah. pads and, yeah. and the cold weather bath or the cold ice bath. And that's that what worked for us. That probably helps the most, the cold ice bath. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's hard to get used to. But, yeah. The... Uh, Ray Cronies, he's a former NASA scientist, but he's currently helping people lose weight. He's helping really, really big people lose weight with uh, just inter like cold shock therapy mm -hmm. and uh, intermittent fasting. But he talks about where he'll go snowboarding for five, six hours, and then he goes and takes a 20-minute bath. Mm -hmm. And it's, he says he just gets it as cool as the temperature goes. Mm -hmm. He doesn't even add ice, and he just lays in it for 20 minutes, and yeah. he gets up feeling so refreshed. Um, well, that's like the... the I spent a lot of time overseas in Eastern Europe, so it's like the, the, the Nordic original Vikings, you know, yeah. and why they were so healthy. Uh, and even today, they typically, that part of the world, they'll win the strongest man contest all the way across yeah. the board. And yeah. some of them are not the biggest people in the world, but they apply the same technique as like the Russians, the Ukrainians, all the way across, is that they'll do saunas, you know, they'll do hot saunas, heat the body up, then they'll go jump into a nice cold bath or they'll lay in the snow, then they'll come back. Right? But they only do this once a week. Mm -hmm. That's the max that they'll do. Because that body is just rejuvenating. You know, It needs that cold to help it. It's like when you become bruised, you apply ice to it. You know, Like the old yeah. guys getting vice, they put peas on their face. You know, We yeah. want to reduce the swelling. Oh, steak. <laughs> right, reduce the swelling. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, it, it, <laughs> But it's, it's, it's like the Vikings, like, yeah. I mean, CrossFit, Thor's daughter, right? Or there's now there's another one who just won, but Andy yeah. Thor's daughter had won, like, back-to-back -back and things yeah. like that. Yeah, and then, but, of course, the, the world's strongest men were always Iceland or Iceland, Norway yeah. or, you know, like, from the north. Yeah. Um, did you guys do any research, or what were you presented with? Because I know you guys weren't the researchers, but were you presented with any research on, like, nerve health and how, because I know we were talking about the benefits of it. Uh, how your nerves are firing and how your nerves are repairing and rejuvenating when you're exposed to that cold? We had a very small class on that. Okay. Um, our docs, you know, put a study together, but that study was only really for the surgeons that we had. Okay. Um, because as an individual, you know what your body's doing. You know, you know, what temperature you can operate, you know, how your body's conducting itself, the sweat level that's coming, you know, I'm not sweating anymore, and yet yeah. I'm at 20 degrees right now. Uh, why I'm standing in a, a capithermia, you yeah. know? Uh, we personally didn't know uh, the nerve firing. That okay. was left up to our docs, and then our docs come up with a plan, because there's only so much information that we can process, you know? Yeah. I'm trying to survive. And, um, yeah, because yeah. you still got to focus on the other stuff of, like, yeah, because physically at, being out At there. the end of the day, no matter where I am, no matter what the temperature is, when I get to point B, I have to conduct a mission at point B. Okay. Yeah. How do I get there? My body, my clothing, temperature, food, all the way through. Do you watch Game of Thrones? Yes. The... Um, the guy's name, the mountain. There you go. The big old freak, the guy who smashed oh, yeah, the yeah, dude's yeah, head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot his actual name, but he's um, from that part of the world, too. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot. And then there's a dude from Poland who wanted, like, back to back to back to back. It's crazy. So interesting. But we know that, like, with nerves, for true strength, it's about muscle recruitment, and that's going to be nerve-based, right? So the connection, this, the more pure it is, the better cold weather we we've heard that it helps strengthen the myelin sheet and the nerves and things like that i know for myself um sometimes i deal with some anxiety when i do cold weather like i'll do the sauna and i'll go outside or i'll do some just simple cold stuff cold showers i do feel better i notice it's just a little bit more controlled yeah um considerably more than anything i've ever tried my wife and i will we'll do even here because one of the first things i asked about was a cold weather uh, or like an ice, ice bath, bath. Right? yeah so we'll do um, like an hour and a half of sauna, steam sauna, and then get into the inside pool, right? Because that's the coldest pool you have. Yes. Yeah. So jump into that, stay there for five minutes, submerge all the way up, and then get back out and do the same thing. We'll do three iterations back and forth, okay. usually once a month, just to 
uh, regenerate everything. Yeah. Um, it's something that if you had a cold weather, or not cold weather, if you had a like ice a tank ice bath or, something, or yeah. four or five ice, because you can't, one's not going to cut it. Yeah. So you need you know three or four in each, maybe in the male and in, in the females. You're going to have to educate them because they're not going to know it. But I think the level that a physical fitness, the numbers, the stats that you're tracking on people would go up, definitely go up because it has gone up for us um, over since past 18 years, you know. Um, I started this program back in 96. And even back in 96, it was some of the, there was no um, technology, no database. Um, it was just old beliefs of what the Nordic people were doing. Okay. Some of the old guys that trained me that were way older than I was back then, they brought that into my world. You know, we weren't educated in that. And they said, look, this is how they do it because they were trained by the Nordic. These guys were. Mm -hmm. So they trained us. And eventually it got smarter and smarter and smarter. And then they realized, the world realized that our mission set was so extreme. It was the highest extreme out of any job in the world. Okay. So how do we keep these guys physically healthy, right? What's our recovery time? Because for so many years we were doing all of these crazy programs of, of lifting and, and running, you know, uh, carrying weight, doing stuff in gas masks and stuff like that. And it really wasn't helping us to accomplish the task. So our, our job, our training program, when we brought in these uh, NFL uh, coaches and we brought in these professional athletes, they designed programs just for me. And one of the things I talked to Tony about uh, was in the beginning, what is my goal? I can come to Alpha, I can work out in Alpha, but I have to have a goal. Because all these exercises are not set up for every single person. What is Troy's goal? My team's goal is to be able to climb a mountain. Well, there are specific exercises. And I know that the ice tank is one of those at the end of the day. Yeah. Every single one. Anyway, that's too much information, but... I love it. No, no, it was good. And you did kind of touch on, like, the, the injury rate. Like, so when you went to, from normal training, or normal, air quotes, like what was before, mm -hmm. to the new style of training, how frequent or infrequent, what was your rate of injury, and then what was the recovery time from that? Okay, I don't... We didn't track those stats. Okay. Um, I ran a... Um, uh, my last unit, I ran a, a uh, the whole unit, roughly about 65 people. All guys from, from my world, uh, so they weren't your normal guys. And um, we, before we got the ice tanks at our, our uh, unit, we were trying to do, we do like a 10 mile run uh, on Wednesday. We do a five mile ruck carrying 65 pounds on Monday. And then on Friday, we would go out and we would do something extreme inside the gym. And then uh, before that, we'd usually do a five mile run, come inside, and then we would do a session of Thor for an hour. Okay, so then we had a couple of guys in the company that probably five guys that would become injured out of 65. Okay. And then they would have to recover, so forth and so on. So we started adding the ice tanks in there. When we added the ice tanks in there, it took us about two weeks. Then I started incorporating once a month a 20 mile run okay. on top of your, all your exercises. So your first day would do a, a six mile ruck with 65 pounds. Then you would do a 7 to 10 mile run on Wednesday. And then on Friday, that Friday, we would do the 20 miler, carrying 25 pounds. Okay. So once we started with the ice and I started doing these 20 milers, we had no injuries. The only injuries that we ever had were guys that came to the unit from another unit that right. had not incorporated any ice tanks into it. Okay. So once I got them into the program and they saying, were solid too. Yeah, and all you have to do to prove that to someone is if you had an ice tank, let them do a, an extreme workout for them, right? And they'll know how they feel the next day, right? And then do the same workout, put them in the ice tank, and then see how they feel the next day. They'll notice that night already. Yeah. And when they wake up in the morning, they're they're fresh. Night they want to yeah. they want to do more, and that drove our guys because uh, they knew what they just accomplished all the tasks that they had to do, and now they're ready to do more. It motivated them. Ooh. It took our level from being world-class athletes, right, to the highest you could possibly think of in any given form. Just because I'm not built like a bodybuilder and I can go jack 500 pounds, yeah, 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 yeah. I can jack 200 pounds and do this all damn day and still shoot communicate at the end of the day and go ski 20 miles. Yeah. So 
I have to be able to do all, all these things. things. Yeah, absolutely. And ice is the key factor wow. in all of it. Wow. And that's so I was, the, the theory I have about how the reason why the the Vikings were yes. such fierce yeah, we fighters because that. and that was why I asked about the nerve health question because when you're exposed to that level of cold, you have no there's no inhibitions. Yeah. But you're always recovering. So if yes. we train, yes. you're all, like that night. You're not living in a in a you know. I would definitely don't have heat in back then. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, a fire, but it's how still, much heat it's is that not, It's all. different. I mean, so it's actually, different. that's a good question. So you guys did campfire. Well, fire is not necessarily campfire. That's true. Like that. Yeah. Did you? No? no. Okay. We didn't have campfires. Okay. No. So it makes it better. Yeah. So at night, you had to use your own heat to to heat yourself. Um, yeah, or, or no or fires because it was just you couldn't. It's make tactical a fire. And sound. Yeah, yeah. Either and safe, uh, if it, it was really sense. cold, we would use water bottles. We okay. would use two Nalgene bottles. Uh, you boiled water, okay. put them in two Nalgene bottles, and you put them inside their sleeves, and then you sleep with them. You put one inside your crotch, in between, and then right, the other, or both underneath your arms, right, right? Arms. inside your sleeping bag. Gotcha. And that will allow you to go down to extreme temperatures, along with your bag. Oh. So. Typically, what we would sleep, and I'm like the rare case, I put off so much heat, is that no matter how cold it is, I would strip down to my uh, ranger panties. Uh, ranger panties, they're like a uh, little running <laughs> shorts, right? They're like oh, yeah. little running. <laughs> you got a Son of a bitch. <laughs> so they're like silk weight, um, really small. Okay. They act like underwear, gotcha. right? Gotcha. So we wear them because like, if I wear those, I don't have to carry underwear with me. And if I go to a foreign country where there's no washer and dryer, because that's where we always go, I can wash that out in the stream, and they dry within 30 minutes. Gotcha. So now, here I go. Yes. So I just wear that, a short sleeve shirt, and 20 below zero, I wear only that, and I get in my sleeping bag. And then I'll take off my jackets, put it inside my sleeping bag with me, Okay. two Nalgene bottles inside, and then that will keep, keep me alive. Wow. Right. At 20 below zero. Yeah. And one of the things he, yeah, we had heard earlier was at 28 degrees Fahrenheit is where your skin, skin freezes. freezes. So... You're surviving at 20 degrees below zero, no frostbite, no, I, well, how many times have you had frostbite? Have you ever had frostbite? Uh, no, I've never had frostbite. I've had frost nip. Okay. Uh, that was at 40 below zero. And okay. difference, uh, I'm sorry, I've never heard of frost nip. What's the frost difference? nip is where you just start to get a little bit of tingling in your fingers, you know? Oh, so wow. Heard. Frostbite, you start to, your skin starts to turn colors because it's dying, right? Yeah. Necrosis is starting to happen. But it's still not too late. No, it's, it as, long, to that as long as you catch it, right? <laughs> okay. As long as you catch it, and then you do a rapid, re, a rapid rewarming and remove the person from that environment. Got gotcha. you. You have to remove them first. Yeah, yeah. But if it prolongs, then, you know, eventually the point of hypothermia, you won't feel anything. You'll be comfortable, and it doesn't really matter if your fingers are falling away. <laughs> That's true, right? Yeah, you yeah, just go okay. to sleep. And <laughs> it's all over. It's all wake over. up. Sign up. So, I, I know this is going to apply the average person is going to hear this, but how, how, what does removal look like if you are... What on a mountainside, what? removal. Like, so you're thinking of like removing someone from that environment. Like, is, what is that? Is that just basically ball them up and get them warm, or do you like basically call somebody to evacuate them out? Well, a lot of times we can't um, call somebody. We yeah. can't call someone, so we have to evacuate our own. Okay. If it's real, if it's life threatening or limb, life or limb, then and if I can get a chopper that can fly in the altitude, I'll call a chopper yeah. right yeah. to pick them up. But if not, then okay. I'll have to evacuate them. Immediately, what, you, what we would normally do for cold weather injuries, we'd assign somebody to the guy. Normally, it was me who produced the most heat. And then I would keep that person warm and keep them going. Um, okay. And then we would eat back them out. Um, so to keep somebody warm like that, how would you, you share the sleeping bag? Yeah, you share the sleeping okay. bag. Sometimes. Uh, and Give some, them your extra bottles. Yeah, everybody would, if, it, it all depends on the situation. So you'd warm up a couple extra bottles and put them in a the bag and zip them up. And, and if that's working, you got a medic. Um, our medics are like uh, PAs, yeah. right? So all of our medics are, are minimum paramedic qualified, but they're, most of them are PAs and they're trained in high altitude environmentals yeah. and things like that. So, you got to remember that you have a dream team with yeah. you. Right, they are. Yeah. And the government spends a lot of money on people mm -hmm. to do that. So they would monitor that person. And if... If his temperature is core temperature, by that time, you know, it's temperature through, you know, where. Yeah. Uh, checking his core temperature, make sure he's okay, make sure his O2 saturation is good, and he's starting to recover. And if it's not happening, then someone else has to get in the tent or the bag with him. Yeah. And then try and stabilize him, and then you get him out. Gotcha. You know? But 
you take all your stuff, you pack it in, make sure he's warm and lucid, IV, IV therapy, and start from there. Man. Um, I don't think we actually hit. Do you know how many cal? and this may not be a number that you actually calculated, but do you know how many calories you would take when you would go out and how many you would consume per day? Easy 5,000. Okay. Easy 5,000. I know, you know, hearing that, hearing like the carbs, we talked about the oatmeal, things like that. Um, do you know how much weight you would drop when you were when you were gone? Yes. Um, on a typical, we'll just use 14,000 because that's most of the Colorado's are. So um, 10 pounds to, if I was standing there for two days, 15 pounds. Okay. Now, if you had to equate, and I don't think you probably, I, maybe you can, I don't know, the amount of work that you were doing, just work, not, not, not cold variable or whatever, to what you'd be doing like in a situation like this, being in Texas, how Flat much line, work? Yeah. The, the alpha work, well you wouldn't be doing an alpha workout up there. So, well I guess you could, but you took an intensity, or an intense workout here, so it's zone three, yeah. and you do that same type of workout up there. How much more is it amplified? No, I'm thinking more like okay. the, the, the work throughout the day. So you're climbing, you're doing all this stuff. If we were to equate that to like a hike, or is that like, so if you were um, doing a hike here. Four marathons. Yeah, like, <laughs> like just the workload, not necessarily the calorie expenditure due to cold and everything else. But what would you say the the workload was of a typical day? I know it's it's a weird question. You're hiking it's, for it's, eight it's hours comparing straight, an right? orange to a yeah hiking and climbing and all sorts of other things. Is it even a question going there, uphill and then down or yeah? There's really no comparison. Yeah, I, I didn't no. think so. As I was asking the question, that's why I couldn't get a. I mean, that's why it's, not it's, even not an Iron Man. You'd have to be like five Iron Man. Yeah, I will <laughs> compare. Well, well, see, one of the one things I learned about. Um, the Eco Challenge, is that um, my community wanted to do the Eco Challenge. Uh, at the time, it was called the Armed Forces Eco Challenge, which is sponsored by the Eco Challenge. It's the only other challenge in the world that has the approval of uh, the Eco Challenge. So we didn't, we didn't know a lot about uh, caloric intake and expenditure because the average mileage that you're covering in those four days is 320 miles, right? And that's carrying... Uh, usually about 15 pounds to 20 pounds. Uh, your lickies and your chewies, your water, and your biking, your kayaking, your, your orienteering, your things like that. But you have to cover all of that with maybe 20 minutes of sleep a night. Maybe. Or sometimes it'll go two days and you'll get 25 minutes of sleep in two days. So how do we keep our bodies going? So I sent out, uh, I had a team of about 20 people, guys and girls, uh, from my community, and I sent them out to all of the different labs across the, the United States. Okay. I said, I, I need you to go for 30 days, and I need you to talk to every single person you can, nutritionist every, that, that has done this before, and then go to Learner Health Products. Learner, uh, Learner Products are the largest vitamin uh, company in the world. Okay. They own companies that you don't even know about, but Learner Health Products. Okay. It just so happens that the uh, owner of Learner was best friends with my commander, overall commander. So he set us up to go talk to that person. And then we ended up coming away with a big pallet full of all the supplements we needed from the fish oil to okay. things to try. Um, again, it goes back to how much food did we eat, what food worked for us. Power Bar at the time was a big deal. Uh, come to find out Power Bar was not the ideal bar to process. It's like a brick. So there are other bars that you needed to do and other supplements, you know. Um, yeah, there's no comparison. We're so yeah, off track on that's that. Wild. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no. But I mean, so you actually went to something. Would you guys use, like, when you were out in, in the field, are you taking, like, fish oils, things like that for extra calories? Are you taking it at all? Is that, like, is it just... It freeze, right? Uh, well, but once it's inside of you, it wouldn't matter. Well, okay. Well, you got to keep it. I mean... You gotta protect all the things like your batteries. Yeah, yeah. You gotta wrap them up in socks, and, and you gotta keep the batteries, gotcha. from, you know, going. I see. I see. Uh, we wouldn't normally take supplements. The only thing that we would take, we'd make sure we do a base load before that. Yeah. If we had a base camp that we could drive up to, or a ski, or a ski tour, if we would take snowmobiles up to, pull all of our kit and big Akio sleds, and then leave it there. But our training, like we would train, or we would camp at ten thousand feet, right? Set up base camp there. But we would uh, get pulled up there, we'd drive up there, stay there, and then we would train at 14,000 feet. We'd spend, come down back and forth. So then you could take all the supplements that you need okay. to do. The only supplements that we would ever really take were, if we couldn't do that, were potassium, magnesium, 
is what we would take with us at all times. Okay. Because once cramping starts, there's no recovery. If you have to keep going, you can't, once your cramping starts, you're done. Yeah. It's, like the, uh, it's like the eco challenge. One thing we learned about it is that that timing mechanism that your body is processing all the supplements, like we did the hour thing again, 30 seconds, and my team, we, and this is just the prime example, or here's a, a classify, it's not classified, it's a case to where this is proven. There was a, a challenge at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, it's called the Perimeter Challenge, it's 60 miles, right? And it, it's different disciplines involved in it. 100 teams start, and they're uh, co-ed teams, or all male teams for you, whatever, doesn't matter. We were Team 93. Now we started this whole eco challenge process, this training process, three days a week, in the cold, taking our supplements, and then we wanted to test ourselves before we went, so we just picked an easy 60 miler to do. And so we started, and they started every, fifth, every 15 minutes, like 10 teams would start. And then you all ended at the same place, but you had to finish. When my team, because we stuck to our regiment and our nutrients and our, all of our supplements, and every hour on that hour, no more than 10 seconds past that minute, we would all take our potassium. Every single time, every person would take it on that time. Because our bodies were starting to process on a rhythm to where it was returning, and we would eat on that time, mm -hmm. right? When I got to the last event, which was a 10-mile run, I went in to get briefed, and we were Team 93, so I went in to get briefed, and they called off the teams. They said Team 5, Team 7, Team 12, and Team 93. If I'm Team 93, and they began with Team 1, and every 10 minutes they were releasing, yeah. what does that tell you about my team? Where were we? we jumped up a lot. Exactly, because we set ourselves on a time. Yeah. Because the biggest problem with any training and the biggest part of any training with anyone. So this all comes down to discipline. Everything is about discipline. If you look at, no matter your cold weather training, uh, which is the big deal, age is everything. The winningest teams are any endurance event in the cold are between 30 and 45. That's the age. Usually it's about a guy who's 35 or a woman who's 35 to 45. They win the most races long endurance races mm -hmm. because younger people do not have the discipline to stick to it when they see someone beating them mm -hmm. they don't stick to their training regimen it's hard mm -hmm. so that's why when people were passing us and taking off I knew that I had to be on six minutes at this mile marker I knew that I had to consume two bars by this time so we stuck to that and that's when we kept passing teams passing teams passing teams and then we won Overall, one, because are we at the fastest time? Then we did the Beast of the East, which is a big Navy SEAL fucking training. We beat them. We beat every team. And then we came in. We just crushed it because we used cold weather. We used the supplements and the return to your body, you know? There has to be a goal, and you have to stick to it. She goes, I'm so tired at the end of the day. I'm like, you need to train to time, yeah. not the way you feel. Your time, your training cycle has to go this and at the top of the event where you're going to compete, it has to peak. And then when you're done, it has to start coming back down. It can't be this, this, this all the way. That's how your body acclimatizes to anything and then comes back down. Down cycle, peaks, up cycle, yeah. and then you peak at yes. that event. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to the moment, the day, you peak at that event. So, you know? Yeah. Anyway. Awesome. We're off cold weather. We're talking about ego challenge. <laughs> that's, uh, hey, that's okay. No, that's... Because a lot of it comes back to... That's what a podcast to, is. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of it comes back to the same thing. You're hearing the consistency of the training and everything else. The supplementation, one of the things that you hit, and, and this may have been something they went over with you. I know you said you had an hour of it. When you're exposed to that extreme cold and altitude, you're going to have an increase in your VO2, but the cold actually increases your uh, what's called mitochondrial biogenesis. They, they went over that with you? Okay. Um, and then you're taking the magnesium, which actually feeds your mitochondria. So, that, I mean, that's all awesome. Yeah. And I, I think a lot of people miss that. So when you think about, and you said it before, like you put off a lot of heat when you're in the cold. The reason why that's happening is one, we're built to acclimate to a lot of different extremes. Not obviously that extreme where you're gonna, you know, freeze to death or get frostbite or frost nip. Um, but the fact that you can generate that kind of heat, recover that way, and, and feel good, 
when you look at the the comparison and environmental cold versus like have you ever used a cryo booth like any of those no okay um what based on your experience and this may be something you actually already know the answer to um what do you think is more effective one of those booths that's going to drop you to 150 degrees air quotes um below zero or an actual ice bath well, I guess I need to understand the cryo a little bit more about the 150 degrees below zero. So, in a cryo booth, what they do is they put you in there, they close the door. I'm not, I'm not 100% sold on this, but you're up to your neck, neck yeah. uh, and they pump liquid nitrogen into the the booth with you. It's supposed to drop the the atmospheric temperature around you mm -hmm. to negative 100, negative 20, a uh, negative 120, negative 150. Um, why based, do we, why do we want to go that cold? So that we can get a quick shock to your system and yeah. cool you to the core. That's what they think. That's yeah. That's what they think. That's the, We're the not premise. Fans. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to tell you, cold water would be my answer. Hands I can't. Out. I can't imagine going from zero. Your ambient air temperature. Let's say it's uh, 50 degrees mm -hmm. or 65 degrees, and now all of a sudden, I'm going to take you to 100 below zero. Mm -hmm. That's a quick shock. There, there are other medical concerns. Has the FDA approved? Mm -hmm. Because the the rate of cooling, they don't keep you in there as long. So three minutes will be your max. Um, the rate of cooling, so there there is a gradient. So let's just say you come to me, I own the booth. Um, what are the side effects? Um, the listed side effects yeah. are basically boost in metabolism, much similar to what you're doing, uh, decrease in inflammation, the potential if you have any heart issues or things like that, they advise you against it. Ask your doctor beforehand. Um, nothing really. Oh yeah. yeah. So it's kind of that. I see that. Yeah, you're not. They don't really address the the potential side effects of it. Of course they don't. Um, I've been in. Have you have you done it or no? <laughs> so uh, uh, Ray Cronies, that same guy refers to Cronies, uh, talks about, and he says it's much better to do like the ice bath, yeah. the natural what, what, cold weather training or cold weather um, natural stuff versus the cryo fit. And things yeah, because like the one time I've actually gone, um, actually the two of the times I went. They dropped it down and they were like, we can't take it any colder. But legally, we can't go any colder. And they had oh, me down okay. to negative 150, allegedly. Okay. Um, and I was staying there. I wasn't shivering. I was fine. And where I was raised, not obviously not as cold as probably the place you've been, upstate New York. Yeah. I've been through cold and I'm standing there. And it's been years since I've been exposed well, to that kind of cold. And it wasn't bad. So I don't understand where the, yeah, I don't understand where the temperature is coming from. But anyone standing at 100, negative 150 should be... I guess like, what you'd have to do is you'd have to really go deep into science and to medicine of muscles as they are recovering at certain temperatures. And maybe there, there is some experiment out there, but if you look at the muscle as it's recovering in an ice bath, it's only going down to, say, 32 degrees, 35 degrees from ambient air temperature of 65. So mm -hmm. what is the muscle actually, how it's contracting, how is it recovering at that slow process, but if I'm going to 150, yeah. it's too quick. That's like yeah. a micro analysis of the saying. muscle. I see what you're saying. Yeah, 100. percent I have to go back to what we, the U.S. government, i.e., you, the taxpayers, mm. have paid us. We have brought in the world's best trainers yeah. to help us, and we still have ice baths. Yeah. No cryo. Yeah. We don't. Wow. So that, that says again, a lot. That says you got to remember that the selling point, right? Yeah. The one thing that there's no money involved in the selling point of ice and water. Mm -hmm. There's none. Everybody makes it. But there is a selling point to a cryo, everything, because it's all about sales. Yeah. So people can skew, they can make uh, decisions, or people can write um, conclusions that would benefit that company for cryo. I see it all the time in the world that I'm in. Yeah. It doesn't mean this the best in the world. Just because the FDA says this, there are a lot of things that the FDA says are great but are not great. And there are a yes. lot of things that they should say right now. Correct. We have not done that. Yeah. And I think that we have the best trainers in the world. Absolutely. By yeah, far. I see so why have we not done it? Do you think that money matters to us? We have a facility just in one unit alone that is twice the size of your gym here. Okay. That's just for one unit. Now that whole floor is set up just for us to do a crazy alpha workout, right? Mm -hmm. Indoor everything, sleds, fields, I dummy see. carries, walls, things like that. And we have a whole floor of just ice and recovery. We have physical therapists, five physical therapists that are in that room 
only for us just to rotate through. And they work on us right then. Yeah. And then we go back out. So we haven't done it yet. I'm not saying it's not great, but to me, yeah. I am medically trained. Going from 60-degree uh -huh. ambient air temperature to 150, I look at the muscle contraction and the actual recovery of that. Uh, great. Maybe to somebody who goes out and they work an hour and a half out and they're football players, and that's great. You know, selling point. He just paid $20,000 for that machine. But yeah. when I can get the same effect or even better, putting you in an ice bath. Well, I, I almost want to say the NFL and, and all these are still doing ice baths. I know they and are. they're not doing cryo fit, yeah. you know, or right. cryotherapy. You know, they're, they're doing more of that. And they're, you know, billion dollar operations as exactly. well. Exactly, exactly. So. Well, it doesn't, yeah. yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. it makes sense. Because I know for us, I and mean, we started talking about it at least two years ago, and I was dragging you guys outside to push sleds and everything else. Mm -hmm. And it's like, where's the, where's the temperature break where are we stop being outside? And, and for me, it was when the metal's too cold to hold. Yeah. Like when your fingers are going numb trying to hold metal, that's when I decided to pull everyone in. Obviously, listening to everything I've heard, we could have gone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we could have gone longer yeah. and put some gloves on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think we didn't come in, I don't know how long Katie made you go outside for class, um, but I don't know, my class didn't come in inside until February when they started re tiling the pools. That's when we stopped using the pools outside for, for training. It had snowed by then last year. Mm -hmm. And we had, I mean, it still <laughs> hadn't gotten, time. yes, San Antonio snow. <laughs> San Antonio snow. Uh, and we still hadn't gotten, I think the water temperature was only 40 degrees. And they were yeah. in and out and on the pool deck and everything else. Mm -hmm. And no, no one died. Which is good. Well, we're all for it. I mean, there's a difference in the class, yeah. you know, like Katie's class. Um, you know, most of the people in Katie's class are from here or they're from the, the climate. Myself and, and Amy have spent our time in Germany. So, we, you know, the Germans would stop smoking, right? If they would stop smoking, they would be the most physically fit nation in the world. Because yeah. they religiously, every weekend, every weekend, they go to the saunas. And that's a cold water, cold water dunk. And that's one of the things that Amy brought up the other day is, why don't we have a concrete hole in your pool area out there and near the sauna that temperature is 35 degrees, right? Person comes out of the sauna, straight in, yes. submerge yourself, count to four, come back up, and then get out, and then go to your next whatever you're going to do, whether it's a steam. Like, Germans take everything, some of the Ukrainians, to extreme. They'll do a 100 degrees Celsius sauna, which is only a 15-minute sauna. Okay. Yeah. Right? So, okay. It's 15 hot. minutes. Yeah, no. Yeah. But they'll come in, and they'll fan you. They'll get everybody in there, they close the door, and the door doesn't open, right? So you're stuck there, unless you pass out. <laughs> so then they'll fan you, which is even worse. Yeah. Right? yeah. And then immediately everyone goes outside and they jump into the cold pool. Right? Mm -hmm. They go back and forth and they'll do salt baths and stuff like that. But if you had that, that cold weather concrete little thing with a ladder, two or three of them, dude, you'd make so much money. You would bring so many more people into here. You educate them and, and make them. The best way to, as you know, you can tell me shit all day. You've got certifications to be a trainer. I could give a shit less what yeah. you do and what you're trained in. I don't care. Yeah. Prove to me. Yeah. Show me that Troy's going to feel better after this ice bath. If and you that show that to me, immediately proof. I'm stuck with you. It'd it's like I'm proof. with, like right now, if for the past couple of years, and we've had multiple conversations with other people, we are stuck with Katie and Anthony, right? Mm -hmm. I don't want to talk to another person. Now that I met you, we're good with this yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I will not talk I to another. To people. <laughs> yeah, I won't talk to another instructor. I see yeah. at all. Yeah, so, absolutely. Um, well, because when there's there's I have exact clients just the yeah. same way. Right. You know, it's it's there's once the trust and the relationships built, it's it's that. This gym, if you had any type of ice tanks, or that you start with two ice bathtubs and then you start with one or two dunk um, concrete, and they're easy to build. Yeah. They're just concrete hole. Yeah. Put cold water in it, maintain it, yeah. and that's it. And that's with ice. No one yeah. stays in there, right? No one stays in there. Yeah, yeah. That's it. It's thirty. It's a uh, count to four. Well, and that's yeah. so we're supposed to be getting the zone. I, we don't know when that's going to happen, but they're supposed to be in there. Ice baths are supposed to be in there. Recovery base. It's going to be a recovery zone. So they're going to have the ice baths. Oh, they're right. going to have the um, what the hell? The the all oh, those boots. The, the normal Yeah. The, uh, it's yeah. Uh, vacuum insulated boots. It helps with. Recovery and things like yeah. that. Oh, I don't know oh, too oh. much about yeah, it. Pneumatic trousers. Yeah. We use them after surgeries. So when a guy can't move or, or a person can't move after surgeries, they'll put mass trousers on them. And then what they do is they circulate air. They're constantly squeezing your muscles. So okay. there's That's no blood exactly clot, right? Yeah. After surgery. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. 
whatever. Same it's, process. You can roll, roll your shit out afterward. Roll all your muscles out. You can do the same damn thing. Get mm -hmm. in your eyes. Again, again, again. We have the best in the world because we've spent the most in the world. Why do we not use those? Yeah. We use those only in surgery, right? When a guy can't move himself, because he's because that's his best option at that point. Well, that's to keep the blood so yeah. Yeah, from dying, right? Well, yeah, because he can't move. Again, <laughs> yeah. it's another ploy, another business ploy to throw some object out there to make more money. Yeah. You have these people who don't even work out. They come here and they look around. They're on the phone all the freaking time. They're not there. They're there to just say, "I'm going to the gym." Yeah, you know. It, to me, it's bullshit. Not putting real work in. No. no. I mean, some guys do. You know, I mean, some guys are pretty big out there. They look yeah. big. No, no, they probably right. couldn't fucking carry weight for well, two miles. It's also the ones that look big and they yeah can't move. Yeah, exactly. Don't want to call it cheating, but they have no mobility. Yeah, yeah. none. Yeah. Have you heard of Wim Hof? No. Oh, okay. Cool. So Wim Hof is he's he's known as the Ice Man. He has a lot of cold weather training, things like that. Um, he's climbed Mount Everest. Is it twice? Uh, yeah, in shorts and it, stuff, barefoot. Yeah. Apparently, he it's been. He's it's, ran across a specific desert. Yeah, uh, he's yeah. ran a full marathon, or I want to say an Ironman, barefoot, blah blah blah. And he attributes it all to his cold weather training um, yeah. and his specific breathing pattern that he does when he's in the cold. So he's done Everest in shorts. Yeah. That's it's supposedly, and it's been it's been supervised. Yeah, like they've documentary. They've, they've documented. They injected him with E. coli. And he said, he said, I can beat the, the yeah. virus. And they inject him, he breathes, and they check him again, and the E. coli virus is gone. They're, and then he says, I can, they're like, okay, well, you're just a phenomenon. He's like, no, I can teach this. So he gets six other people, and he teaches them his breathing method with the cold weather training. And they inject him with E. coli. It's on his documentary, and they beat it. And there's, they do other little tests before that, like with, like he's got headaches, or they, they, cause certain things and through his breathing method it's specific that. but well, it's all through cold weather training well, so. the cold weather training when it comes to but frostbite it. Yeah. frost nip it all comes down to the moisture uh, inside of your body you okay. know his skin of course um, I find it hard to believe that he did it in shorts he's done Everest with extreme temperatures yeah see I want to right. double I really check if it was Everest or if it was something else I, I don't want to I don't, I don't yeah. know why I don't okay so the most Everest. physically fit people in the world are who the Sherpas. Yeah. The Sherpas are the most physically fit people okay. in the world. They do Everest twenty something times. They can go up and down Everest, right? Yeah. And they that's live right. there. That's right. They that's live right. there. I mean, these guys are absolutely studs. That's why no one counts their Everest summits, you know, because they just do it all the time. They yeah. just do it all the time. But they live there. It's but not easy. one of those guys. Not does one it, of those does guys. it with in shorts? Yeah, yeah. Right. No, I totally understand that. And so. I'm looking right now to see which one it was. I know he, uh, the first video I found was him in, I think it was Times Square, setting the longest time in an ice box. And he's just hanging out in a box of ice. And then this one right where here. Did he come, where did he come from before he did that? When uh, was he the week before, or two weeks before? Oh, well, he's probably oh, yeah. been training. Oh, yeah, you're yeah right. he's been, his, so. But he's got one in his, his own house, probably. Yeah, well, he, his wife passed away. He tried to commit suicide by just dumping himself into an ice lake. And he said as he was dying, he recognized that cold weather was his, like, cold weather won't feel sorry for you. It's going to treat you the way it is. And so then that saved his life. Then he started doing this, his breathing techniques and through cold weather training and he started getting I I, I, I could kind of see that. Um, out of the groups of guys, and normally um, a class all year long, about 200, 200 guys I would train from different parts of the world, from SEALs to guys from other units out there and then my old units and there were one or two and I'm one of them that I deal extremely well with cold weather extremely well I'll be in a short sleeve shirt when everyone else will be in two jackets yeah and it's just I, I don't get cold mm -hmm. you know um, definitely from your training 100% well I don't know I think it has to do with my DNA because okay my because um, this guy my family absolutely just to show you what this guy looks like yeah. so you can see where he comes from and, yeah Okay, so this is just him swimming through. Yeah. Where is he from? He's from is he from the way conscious in uh, the cold. The I cold can't is remember, a forest. But somewhere from that part of the world. Yes. Yeah. You, you go you along with the cold and what it well, does in the uh, on, on the physiology, yes. um, and you use your breathing. Been there. Now yeah. I know right, what I'm happens physiologically. From then, those okay. days, it was all. My grandmother. I remember grandmother when I was little. 
we never, I, I enjoyed her house, but her house was absolutely freezing. Yeah. I mean freezing. It was 50 degrees in the house, and she would have fans in every room going all the time. So whenever my dad and my uncle would go, they would absolutely die. And I was the only one running around in shorts in that house. And then I knew at that point that I was really good at cold okay. because I love the cold. Okay. Um, it, yeah, I, I think it's DNA because my grandmother had the same thing. Somehow it skipped my dad. He, he's a wuss when it comes to that. But when it comes to cold weather, <laughs> I, I'm, I thrive in it. Yeah, when yeah, people yeah. shut down because of they think their hands are aching and I am like the guy who moves, 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 and I keep guys going. Keeps going. Partially because I don't want to rescue them because I know how much I pay them. <laughs> so that's <laughs> more work than it is to keep them going. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. I get to eat more, too, in the winter. So yeah. Because yeah, uh, we've talked about that, too. Living in New York, we were raised, and um, Katie's already made reference to the fact that she's scared to go to my mom's house because my mom yeah, keeps the heat at you know, 60, 65 in the winter, and that's the highest it will go. Like, there is no above that. And I mean, yeah. Katie's like, I can't survive in that. I'm like, no, you can. Well, how do I get ready for it? I'm like, loose and layers, baby. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you know how. Um, she's like, I'm going to die. You're not going to die. Um, what would you say the best way? So you did say, like, educate people. What would you say? And I know it's hard to use you because you've, you've been through it. You, you don't mind the cold. Um, no, when you say you like the cold, do you, I mean, how do you feel in the cold? I mean, you feel cold. It's not like you're genetically immune to cold. Like, it's not. Like, what do you feel in the cold weather? Nah, I, I, I think Troy doesn't it, feel cold until 30 minutes in. <laughs> um, it's motivating to me. It stimulates me. Um, I, again, I, I'm trained to know that if I don't... Do you have a 2 o'clock, Isaac? Oh, uh, yeah, I didn't realize it was already okay. 2. Wow. All right. Sweet. I have to head out. Okay. My pleasure. Nice Thank you, sir. Um... So it's motivating to you, it's like, what do you, I guess, you're still feeling cold though. It's not like you're outside, it's 30 degrees, you're like, yeah, it's, it's spring. Like you're outside, it's 30 degrees, you're like, screw this, it's cold or? No, I don't, um, for some reason, when it gets cold, it makes me want to move more. Okay. Um, because I, I know that I'm burning calories. Yeah. And so I, I will purposely take off my clothes and, and I will continue to move, 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 because I'm going to burn calories. And then I'm going to go through that whole cycle of, okay, I'm done moving, throw my jacket back on, let my body heat back up, uh, and I feel better after that. And it's like an addiction to me when it comes to the cold. Okay. Like my house right now, during the summer, it's uh, 66 degrees, right? Absolutely. And right now, uh, when it was 50 last weekend, I had no heat on. I'm like... Yeah. Everybody's running around in jackets, you know, and Amy's a cold. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm happy loving right it. now. Oh, yeah, Katie was out of town. We had turned the heat on. We just left it there. Even Ava, she's like, she's good with the heat. She puts off a ton of heat. She's heat. like me. Yeah. Um, I don't think her mom was that way. I can't remember. And I know Katie's definitely not that way. Katie's one of those people, like, if the temperature drops below 60, she's got all the layers on. Right. Um, so what would you say is the easiest way, and again, this again doesn't really apply to you because you're more geared towards the cold, you like it, you understand it. How do you think we should go about educating people on the benefits of it to push them out of their comfort zones? Uh, take your classes. If you have an alpha class, um, what I would like to see is once you get the facility to where you think it's supposed to be, um, I'm going to suggest to Katie that she, that she takes the class, um, cuts the class short 20 minutes, Give us a quick workout that day and say, all right, this is like a, on Monday we have a hard day, right? Super hard day. Let's push it all the way. Let's go two minutes over. And on Wednesday is going to be the, the kind of recovery day. We have a 20-minute um, workout that begin at this time. 20 minutes of just pure pushing, 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 extreme. And then at the end of that class on Wednesday, say, all right, we're going to go down to the tanks, reserve the tanks, and let's talk about this. Mm -hmm. This is how we're going to recover. I want you to get in it. You just had a crazy workout for 20 minutes of craziness. And then the very next day on Friday, when, when they come back for the class, ask everybody how they felt. Yeah. That would be the best way to get the alpha class. And once you get the alpha class or whatever other classes, you get those guys in there, start rotating in there, eventually... The one thing that I've learned about this uh, program here with Alpha is that we've been this class for so long now is that we watch everyone around us. Yeah. Everybody watches the class, right? 
And then they start seeing all of the weight, especially the girls are jacking. I mean, they're just, and they're still running. So people start to see that, and you got people that come by and say, wait, what's, what's going on? What are you guys doing? Yeah. And so when they take that level of recovery, and then they bump up the next level of physical fitness, that level of recovery, the next level of physical fitness, people are going to start to, to go, I want to get involved with that. Yeah. One, as a business development project, that's awesome. Because then you're going to get people to come in and you're going to say, all right, look, this is what we've been doing. Recovery is this, this, this. This is how we recover. My joints feel better. Overall, I'm more physically fit. My body process, my metabolism has kick, kicked up. I'm eating, you know, whatever. But that's the best way. I'm going to suggest that to Katie. Okay. Cut the, the class short. Take us in there and give us that, that class and then uh, go from there. Okay. I know... Um there may be some times over the winter where I'll sub and take you guys out into the cold because mm -hmm. I can obviously tolerate it more than mm -hmm. she there. can. Um, but yeah, so, and that's one thing the morning crew has actually gotten better about. I have one guy in there who's been there. Were you there when Curtis was there? Did he join as you were leaving or you never crossed paths? I never crossed paths. Okay. So he was, he's joined class and he's been through an entire two winter cycles with me mm -hmm. and he absolutely like, he raves about it. When we go downstairs, he's like, you guys can't wait till the winter. He's like, talk about not having any pain, not having any of this, not having any of that. And everyone's like, he's not going to bring us out here when it's cold. And of course, last week when it was super cold, he's like, I told you to be out here. And they're all like, this isn't right. And uh, one lady actually brought her boyfriend. She's like, he was, uh, she said, do you mind if he comes to class? He was telling me that there was no way that I went outside last week in the cold weather. Mm. And there was, this Wednesday, it was only 50 something degrees outside. So the ambient temperature was 50 degrees. The pool, allegedly, was still being heated. I think it was, it wasn't cool by any stretch of the imagination. And this poor guy was, he was dying. Like, he's like, this is ridiculous, this is so cold. I'm like, don't worry buddy, you'll be fine. And uh, of course, she gets out of the pool and she's like, "No, you're gonna feel great later on. You're gonna be super hungry and everything else." And he's like, "This is horrible. I think I'm gonna. I got a fever. I'm gonna die." Oh, actually, I want to ask that question. Of the time that you spent in the cold, how many people got sick from being cold? Yeah. No one. God. Okay. Thank you. I wanted. It. I wanted that on like. So overall, um, this is a stats number. This is an actual fact. 345 people I trained in um, three years to be advanced mountaineers. And that was uh, two months of Colorado, um, right around three weeks to 30 days in Alaska. And not one single person ever out of the 300 got sick from cold, not one. We only had two hypothermia cases that were mild hypothermia. It was. Uh, because it was a mixture of rain and cold at the same time. Yeah. So um, that was a gear issue. But as far as being cold, not one single person. As a matter of fact, we, whenever students would come and train at altitude cold, they would have to take a physical fitness test for their unit. Every single one of those students, when they left, would take it within two to three days. One, being at altitude, but even Alaska, because Alaska was sea level, unless they went up to McKinley, they would go back and from the cold and the recovery outscore every single person in their unit. Hmm. Now that, uh, yeah, no one gets sick from the cold and that, you know, my kids say, oh, I'm going to get catch a cold. That's absolutely impossible. Hmm. That's not going to happen. Okay. As long as somebody else says that it's not me, maybe now, it has some weight. The only time stuff. I think you should not do any outdoor stuff is um, in the rain, especially pushing the sled because that's unsafe. Yeah. Everything else. Um, the heat, of course, you know, you adjust the heat when it's hot as hell, but the cold, I think, in the winter, we should be outside. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm trained. Amy's been yeah. through that her whole time. She's been married to me, and, and we like it. You know, we're not from here, so yeah. the benefits are they far outweighed not doing it. Yeah. Isaac and I talk about it a lot. We think there's a lot, huge, huge correlation between people's thyroid issues, endocrine issues, things like that, because they're not exposed to the extreme heats. They're not exposed to the extreme colds. We live in a very climate controlled environment. If you do have to walk outside in the heat or in the cold, it's 20 feet to your car and that's it. And then the car starts and most, most of us now have automatic starters. So the car is on and waiting for you no matter what the climate is. So of course your body has issues regulating when it's always being regulated for it. Mm -hmm. So we've talked about it multiple times and we expose our clients to it. 
we go outside, we get outside the heat whenever we can. Um, all the research we've done on heat shock and cold shock proteins, how it affects the body, they exist in our body for a reason. So yeah, I mean, we're definitely on board with it. The question is just how to involve more people and you kind of- You need to tell, here's what, the, okay, so here's the problem with, uh, with the way you set everything up. Everyone here, you guys need to tell the class. Mm -hmm. You need to educate the class. Don't say, we're just gonna be outside and it's cold and everybody's on their little texting channel going, oh my God, it's too cold, it's, I, mm -hmm. I feel like, okay. Then people come up with these excuses. But if you give them a class, and I, you take that last 10 minutes, right, of class, and you bring them around and say, this is what we're going to start doing. Because these are the benefits. This is not something new. These things will actually help you. And you can use me uh, to, because people in my class, they listen to me when it comes to certain things. Other shit, they don't. But Because <laughs> I'm usually looking around. Mm -hmm. Give them the reason why they're going out there. People don't like to go do shit when you don't tell them why. You need to explain to them, this is the health benefits from them. You know, one of the biggest success cases I see happening is um, Bernice. She has come such a long way, you know, and she needs a lot of education yeah. in everything from swimming to lifting, but she's motivated to, to be there. And when you explain something to her, she's like, okay, I see it now. I understand that. You, again, you can tell people to do shit. People that have no mind and they're weak-willed, they'll just do shit because you're in a black jacket and you're telling me, and I'm paying you that money every single month to tell me what to do. Yeah. I'm not that way. I'm, I'm useless when it comes to that. I don't like to listen to you. Yeah. you show me. This is what's going to benefit you. And then I'll do it all day. Yeah. I'm there. So yeah. educate them because educating, as you know, is the process to where people grow in their mind and their body. They learn something new every day, then they change. It makes their life change. They become better in society, in the world. They make different decisions. A stagnant, dormant person is going to make a decision to do this. Yeah. You, on the other hand, are going to make this decision. Because it's different. Your mind, it changes your whole mind. The way it processes, the way it thinks. Your limits of extremities are out here. Yeah. A person, like you said, just goes in from the gym to the car, he has a, or she has a barrier, a limit. She, she's not going to go past. When you take someone outside in 30 degree weather, that limit is way over here. Yeah. And that opens the mind. The mind, you think better. Yeah. You think outside the box. So many people in this gym are in a box. Any gym, yeah. they're in a box. Take them outside the box. The human anatomy is amazing. There's so many things that we can do. Yeah. You know, so... Anyway, that was my take on it. No, I love it. Um, I only have one more question. Uh, when you when you were up there, so uh, one of the things that Isaac and I have talked about, the extreme heat, extreme cold, it also it mellows out your central nervous system. When you were exposed to the extreme cold, extreme altitude, did you ever have issues with anxiety? Not necessarily just you, you as a unit, you as everything else, anxiety issues or things like that, or worry. I mean, not outside of normal worries, not like... Is my dog getting fed? Um, like, not life or death things, but like the stupid worries. I don't know how else to phrase that. Um, no. Okay. Absolutely not. Um, I. But then again, like, before you can get to the level where we were, you're put through an assessment program, which is three weeks long. Okay. And they do all types of the physical, the physical assessment is it's not like anything you've ever done in your life and then the mental assessment comes to that because um, you're breaking down yeah. um, when I went to the course and back in 90 uh, three weeks I lost 27 pounds so when you lose all of that weight and your body's constantly I, I couldn't eat enough you know yeah. I was 210 pounds when I went um, but those stresses that mental comes from that but on a mountain or in cold weather, I never, you know, never ever. I always think about survival because I know if I shut down, I'm going to die. Yeah. And it, the reason why I had asked is a lot of times we've, we've seen the research on how cold exposure, whether it's cold baths or heat exposure from being in the sauna, decrease anxiety, depression, things like that. And I know, I know that you're not the normal person they'd be studying for that because obviously the training you went through my wife, before that. My wife is, though. Um, okay. In the past 30 days since she's... Yeah, 30 days, or maybe 45. She started swimming again, and she's been doing it in the cold when no one else has been swimming. Um, 
she told me the other day that her anxiety level is absolutely almost gone completely. And she, when she gets out of uh, the pool, she is uh, regenerated. Uh, she comes home and she's fresh and she's moving. She'll go do a two and a half mile walk on the river with the dog. She just ran seven miles and then she just swam a mile and a half. Um, but she's a prime example. She's never been through any training that I've been gone through, and um, her stress level has absolutely almost disappeared. Okay. Yeah, I feel like a lot of that has to do with the fact that when you're that cold, you're burning off all the extra energy that would have gone towards yeah. the worry and everything else. You're getting rid of the toxins. Yeah. All the toxins that are in your body, as you know, you're getting rid of them because you're burning. You're whether it's you know through. Uh, going to the bathroom or whatever it's doing, you're getting rid of all the all the stuff, and you're getting down to the core. And of course, the longer you stay at altitude and cold, your body's starting to eat itself. Um, no, it's. Um, I think it'd be great if you guys had cold weather baths. Cold weather, goddamn it! If you had <laughs> the ice baths, ice tanks here, yeah. I think it'd be perfect. It would make me want to come here more because as it stands right now, I only want to come three days a week, and that's it. Yeah, I know we've talked about it a bunch of times. Um, we actually had. Uh, we had a couple of members that were willing to like pay to get them put in, and then recently with the zones being put in, I can't remember what clubs have them, but I know they have the ice baths in them for that exact thing, for the recovery aspect, because of what we know about the, the cold weather, cold water, what it does. Mm-hmm. Um, I know one thing I've wanted to do, and I don't know how to get it to take off because people are just afraid of the cold, it's, excuse me. Teach basically thirty-minute seminars, but in the cold water. This is why the cold's good for you. This is what's happening in your system. And basically, once a week, just get people together. Even if we just end up shooting the shit and just hanging out in the cold water, just so people can get used to this is what cold does. This is how it benefits you. And this is how you feel afterwards. It's just that initial ripping off the bandaid of getting into water that's not comfortable. And how many people want to stay comfortable? Right. Uh, again, it goes back to the class you're taking. You know, you're taking Alpha, and Alpha is supposed to be the number one class to where it's the extreme class, right? You're, according to your guys' little scale, they should be working your way up and then Alpha, right? Yeah. So when, if you're an Alpha, you, you should be different than everyone else, you know? Yeah. The term Alpha, it's not Beta, it's, no. not, it's Alpha. So if I'm in Alpha, where am I? Like today's, you know, my wife... It, She's pushed by all the other women up there, but I looked at all of the weights today of all those women, and then I looked at my wife. So I was like, she crushed every single woman in that class. So I was like, and she doesn't look like they are, but she's yeah. so motivated to get out there, and cold has helped her do that. Yeah. I believe the last 30 days of being in the cold has taken her to a completely different level. Thank you, sir. Thanks for uh, sitting and chatting with us. No worries. Isaac stepped out. Thank you guys for listening, and we'll be back next week. Thanks for checking us out. If you like this, Go ahead, like it, share it, subscribe, check us out on Facebook and Instagram.